hey guys welcome back to my channel so today it's a beautiful day outside i'm sitting in the living room lighting is bomb so i just thought i would get in front of the camera film a quick video for you guys um this video has not been planned out or thought of it wasn't i had no intentions of filming this video today so if it's a little bit rambly i apologize about that in advance because i'm a rambly girl y'all know that but if this is your first time ever on my channel my name is Jalen. thank you so much for stopping by and giving me an opportunity to bless you with my content no i'm just kidding <laughs> but no for real thank you guys for stopping by i really do appreciate it you can call me Jalen, j whatever make sure that you subscribe to this channel if this video is something that helps you or inspires you and share it with other people because you know that's the whole purpose to share my story and inspire other people so yeah so basically today I kind of just want to talk about like uh, depression my mental health and just how I have gotten out of a really dark place if you've been following me for a long time then you know that there was a time frame where I was really going through it mentally um, and I just was not really in the best mind space i mean i feel like i've done a decent job documenting my process on how i've grown mentally spiritually and emotionally um so i will link a playlist down below where i just kind of talk about my depression and you guys can kind of see the way that my mindset transitioned i think that it's very interesting to just see the growth that has happened over the past couple of years um but beyond that i just wanted to talk about basically how I started to get out of my depressive state because it was not easy um there were and I'm gonna be blunt I'm also I'm gonna go ahead and give a trigger warning right now that I will be talking about um suicide a little bit in this video I also will be talking about just some other things that may be triggering so if you um are easily triggered by those things I want to first of all tell you that you are stronger than you believe and that you can get out of this and you can get out of the mind state where you feel like you don't have anything to live for and that you're not important because you are um that's the first thing and the second thing is just if you don't think that you'll be able to handle this i would highly suggest talking to a professional i don't want to trigger anybody or make anybody upset but anyway um there was time frames where I really didn't know if I was gonna make it to the next stage in my life and before I turned 20 I think 20 was a very like drastic change for me um, I never like imagined myself reaching my 20s because I just thought that something would always happen to me before I reached 20 or I thought that I was going to have killed myself by the time I reached 20 um and thank god that has not happened I'm almost 21 um but once i turned 20 because i want to say that was really the start of when i started to come out of my depressive episode once i turned 20 so i had been to the hospital on multiple occasions for suicide attempts for just extreme depression i was diagnosed with major depressive disorder i don't know if i i mean i'm pretty sure i mentioned that to you guys before but you know if you're new here um i was diagnosed with that and it was really really hard for me to deal with to be honest with y'all like i i can't even begin to explain the things that were going on with me mentally because they're so dark and deep and it's like because i have gone through these processes where i have grown and learned how to deal with these emotions like I don't even like you know trying to put myself back into the space to feel those emotions but if you're going through depression you know you're watching this video I just want to reiterate that I understand what it feels like to be in those dark moments when you feel like you don't have anyone and you feel like nobody understands and you feel like you don't have anything to live for and you feel like everything is going wrong I just want you to know I've been there like that's the only point I'm trying to reiterate but I've been to the hospital because it just got to a point where I just did not want to live anymore. Um, or at least half of me didn't want to live anymore. I didn't want to live in the way that I was at the time. I didn't want to be the person that I felt like I was. 
and I wanted more for myself but I didn't know how to get more for myself and it felt like getting more for myself was impossible and that it was unattainable and I thought the only way for peace and joy in my life was to kill myself um so I remember one day around April last year I want to say it just got to a point where I hadn't left my room in a few days um and I was doing a lot of things that I probably shouldn't have been doing uh well I'm just keeping a band now I'm not going back to school so it's really no reason to or not going back to the schools I was at so um I was smoking a lot of weed like a lot a lot of weed honestly I was high all the time um I slept a lot I ate a lot and I knew that I was on track to be the girl I was in 2016 and I did not want to go down that path again and I remember just one day sitting in my room at the time I had a, a room on the fifth floor of my building my dorm and the window could open like all the way so I could literally sit outside like sit in my window and sometimes like when I would smoke I would sit in my window or just open the window up all the way just enough for me to sit like halfway out of it or whatever but one day I'm sitting in the window and I'm smoking and I decided to turn my feet so I could kind of dangle a little bit um now I normally didn't do this because I just don't like to be risky <laughs> but I turned my feet around and I just kind of sat there and I thought you know you know if you would be so much happier dead just go ahead Go ahead and do it. Go ahead and jump. Like, what do you lose? And in that moment, it was like, I realized that I didn't want to be dead. I realized I didn't want to hurt myself. I didn't want to leave my family and my friends. But there was a part of me that did want to jump. The hurt part. Okay, the part of me who felt worthless, the part of me who felt like I wasn't good enough, that part of me wanted to jump that night. And so I let it. I let the part of me inside that had held on to the belief that I was not worthy of living the life that I want. I let that girl jump. I let the girl jump that always felt like everything was going wrong and that everything was set up against me and that I was a victim of my circumstances and that I was destined to live a life unfulfilled. I let that girl jump, okay? And I, of course that's a metaphor, like, but emotionally, mentally, when I say I let that girl jump, I decided right then that the part of me that did not want to jump the hesitation because I know oh my god as somebody who has been in multiple suicide attempts I know what it's like and I know that moment of hesitation is everything that moment that you hesitate listen to that because that's your higher self that's the other part of yourself that says wait a minute what about my family? What about my future? What about my goals? Because where you are right now is not where you're going to be forever. So I listened to the hesitation. I said, okay, you know what? That part of me that says, but wait, that's the part of me that I'm going to identify with from now on and from that moment um, I couldn't have articulated this well at the moment but it was almost like a split in between my thoughts and my reality and the hesitation became my reality now depression is such a tricky thing because depression is all up here and as I know what it feels like to be in a space where it's like you don't even know how to tell people 
what's wrong with you because it's hard to articulate and because it's not a physical condition people instantly just throw it under the rug and treat it as if you know it's something that you just need to get over um and that's i know that's not the case and so that's not what i'm telling you guys to do the tricky part about depression is it's up here which means that it starts up here and if you don't catch it up here the effects are outward so since it starts up here what was causing me to be depressed now there are a couple there are a couple of things i'm because i could talk in a separate video about other things that i did to help my depression such as going vegan such as uh lifestyle changes things like that but this video i'm focusing purely on thought process so in order to fix the situation since it starts up here we have to go up here so why am i depressed what's making me depressed what triggers me to feel like i am worthless like i'm nobody like i don't matter when those thoughts would come instead of doing what i used to do which is feed into them and allow them to overcome me yes i am worthless yes i am nobody i, I don't matter like you're right i don't matter so i should, might as well just kill myself instead of getting to that point and allowing myself to feel that i asked myself i stopped i stopped automatically identifying my thoughts with the truth so when that thought popped up i'm worthless the part of me that hesitated the night that i almost jumped said well why instead of just automatically taking that thought that popped into my head as truth i questioned it and i thought well why am i worthless and this is where you run into some problems because depression hates being questioned depression hates being questioned so when you get to this point, this is the make or break because this will change your life in all aspects if you allow it to. You get this question, you're going to have a problem because then you realize, well, damn, why am I worthless? What makes me worthless? Hey guys, future Jalen here, just eating some nachos. Eww. But I just wanted to insert in this part and say, most people's response to the question I just said, why are you worthless, will probably have something to do with their story, with uh, something that they've done, something that's happened to them, something that is in the past, more than likely. You are not what you have done. You are not what you have been through. Your story is separate from who you are. So do not confuse and identify who you are with what you have been through. So that cannot be your answer to the question. Anything that is revolving with something that you have been through or relating to your story. I'm a human being, just like every other human being on this planet. I was born, which means that I am entitled to be here. I'm worth being on this earth. And that makes me worth something. Okay, so wait, okay, maybe you're not worthless, but you're ugly. Well, what makes me ugly? For a long time, well, that's personal. For a long time, I thought I was ugly because of my nose. I hated my nose. I just thought it was so big for my face and everything. Um, okay, so why am I ugly? I'm ugly because I have a huge nose. Okay, why is having a huge nose ugly? Damn, why is having a huge nose ugly? Who said having a huge nose was ugly? Who said it was anything wrong with having a big nose? It's a, it's a part of my face. It helps me to breathe. What makes it ugly? Now, I could get deeper into societal reasons on why people have their thoughts of what is attractive and what is not but i'm not going to go there for this video because it's not even about that but the point is 
Depression, in simple terms for me, is when your brain lies to you so much that you start to believe it. And you cannot let your brain keep ruling your life because your brain is a part of you. You are not your brain, okay? Your thoughts, all the things that's running through your mind on a daily basis, that does not have to be you. And that's where meditation and things like that come in because it helps you to differentiate your thoughts that come from conditioning, that come from your environment, your circumstances. Those are where your thoughts come from, but those thoughts don't necessarily always line up to who you are. Let me give you an example. Um, let's say you have watched a violent movie in your lifetime, okay? Cool. Maybe you've watched a violent movie. I feel like everybody's watched at least one violent movie in their lifetime. Okay, and because you watched that movie and you saw that there was somebody in that movie that maybe did some not so great things in that movie and you are walking down the street or whatever and in the movie, the guy robbed a woman, an old lady or something like that, okay? Now you can walk past this lady and your thought might say, I could rob this lady. Maybe you ain't never robbed nobody in your whole entire life, but because you saw that movie and that thought was placed there, like it becomes something that pops up in your head. Now, what are most logical people going to do? Not rob the lady. Just keep on walking because that's what defines and differentiates your thoughts from your reality. Your reality only becomes what you act on. Your thoughts do not affect your reality until you act on them and make a decision based on them. So you have to think of your thoughts as separate from who you are and choose the thoughts that you be cautious about the thoughts that you choose to allow in your mental space and that you allow yourself to focus on. Because if you constantly focus on I'm worthless, nobody loves me, I'm not important, I don't have a purpose in life, that is who you're going to identify yourself with and you're going to start to believe it. But until you believe it, it is just a thought. And that's it. And a thought can't hurt you. And a thought holds no weight. <laughs> a thought holds no weight. Because what I realized, this was the game changer right here. I used to be the type to get depressed, want to eat, want to smoke, not do nothing. Cycle continues because now I'm depressed because I done spent a whole nother day eating, smoking, not doing nothing. So now the thought that comes to my head is, oh, you're lazy. You're not worth anything because you're not doing anything. You're not working towards anything. Now that thought came up here. Why am I lazy? Well, because I'm sitting in the bed, I'm eating, and I'm not doing anything. Well, it's a real simple fix to that. What's the fix? Get up. Stop eating when you're not hungry. And it's like... It seems so simple. That's because it is simple. And what makes it hard is the fact that your depression doesn't want to be cured because it's safe. It's safe. It feels safe in your room. It feels comfortable in your room. It feels safe with this box of pizza in front of you and these brownies. And it's safe to tell yourself that I'm isolated from the world. The world doesn't care about me. This is my, my hub. It feels good to an extent. And you become so identified with your depression and your story that you fall in love with it. So much so that you gotta tell everybody about it. You gotta tell everybody, this is what happened to me. This is why I am the way that I am. <sighs> Woe is me. Cause that was me, y'all. Like, <laughs> that was me. Anytime I had the opportunity to tell somebody my sob story, I did. Even now I have to catch myself because if I'm not careful, I find myself identifying with those old thoughts once again. And it's never a good position to be in. So, like I said, this video wasn't planned. It was kind of rambly. I was kind of all over the place. I hope that something that I said stuck, hopefully, because... I 
know what it feels like to be in that dark space and I don't wish that on anybody like not even my worst enemy um and so if there is any way for me to help someone get out of that dark space like that's what I'm all about so if I was vague about something if like I made a point and you were kind of like oh I almost got that like I wish you would elaborate on that a little bit more leave me a comment and I will definitely respond to you guys or if you want to talk to me a little bit more privately you can DM me on Instagram I'll put my Instagram on the screen go ahead I try to respond um, as soon as possible but I'm not always up there so give me like at least a day or two if I don't respond like immediately but yeah I love you guys so much thank you for sitting and watching this video if you made it all the way to the end comment fuck depression and <laughs> until next time I love you guys so much and remember in order to live your life to its fullest you must live fearlessly I love you guys bye y'all